Hey everybody, so today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Lewis dot structures and in particular I'm going to be talking about the concept of formal charge. So what is formal charge? Well simply put, formal charge is the charge that each atom in a Lewis dot structure would have if all of the electrons that compose every chemical bond were shared equally between the two bonded atoms. Now I know that was quite a mouthful, um, but if you consider a Lewis dot structure, let's say the Lewis dot structure for hydrogen chloride, HCl. Now we probably know a few things about hydrogen chloride, for instance that it's really bad for you, um, one, number one. Um, number two, we also know that, we should know, that the chlorine atom being more electronegative than the hydrogen atom is going to pull the electrons that compose that single covalent bond more closely toward it, leaving it, with, leaving it with a partial negative charge while leaving the hydrogen atom with a partial positive charge, right? Electronegativity. If you don't know anything about that, um, I suggest you learn more about it. But <clears throat> formal charge basically just ignores electronegativity neg considerations completely. Formal charge assumes that the electrons, both of those two electrons that compose that single covalent bond, are basically split down the middle. Hydrogen gets one of them and chlorine gets one of them. So <clears throat> if we want to calculate the formal charge for any given atom within any Lewis dot structure, and this also applies to polyatomic ions as well, then the following formula is going to come in handy. So we've got formal charge is equal to valence electrons minus formal electrons. Now valence electrons is pretty easy. All you have to do to find the number of valence electrons an element has is simply look it up in the periodic table, figure out which group it's in among the main group elements, and there you go. So oxygen group six, six valence electrons. Carbon group four, four valence electrons, and so on and so forth. Helium is an exception, but helium doesn't do chemical bonding anyway, at least for the most part. So where was I going with that? Well, okay, so valence electrons we understand. Formal electrons may be a new concept for you. So what formal electrons are is as follows. There are two formal electrons per lone pair of electrons. Remember lone pairs, those are the ones that uh, an atom has all to itself, not involved in chemical bonding. Two electrons per lone, two formal electrons per lone pair, and then one formal electron per shared pair. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier, you know, split down the middle. Each bond, half of that bond is going to one atom, half of that bond is going to the other atom, right? So in, in other words, it's going to be valence electrons minus all of the lone pair electrons minus half of the shared pair or bonding electrons. So if we put this to work, if we, uh, let's say we revisit the hydrogen chloride molecule, right? Starting with the formal charge of hydrogen, hydrogen being in group one, it's going to have one valence electron. And how many formal electrons does hydrogen have? Well, it has no lone pairs and it also has a single shared pair sharing a pair of electrons with the chlorine. And so two per lone pair, that's zero. One per shared pair, that's one from one shared pair. And so you get one valence electron minus one formal electron, which is zero. So the hydrogen has a zero formal charge. If we take a look at the chlorine, we're gonna see a similar story here. Chlorine being group seven, it's got seven valence electrons. And how many formal electrons? Well, it's got those three lone pairs, which accounts for six formal electrons plus one electron coming from that shared pair, that chemical bond, that single covalent bond, right? And so seven valence electrons minus seven formal electrons is going to be equal to zero. So in hydrogen chloride, both the hydrogen and the chlorine both have zero formal charges, even though there's those electronegativity different, uh, differences between those two elements. So if we take this formula and this concept and we apply it to something, I don't know, I guess a little bit more advanced, um, let's say that we're trying to find the formal charge of every atom in a molecule of, I don't know, let's say, let's say we're doing the hydronium ion, which is H3O plus. So here's the Lewis dot structure for hydronium ion. Starting with each hydrogen atom, well, there's one valence electron, there's one formal electron coming from that one single covalent bond with the oxygen, and so one minus one is zero. So all of the hydrogens have zero formal charges, but if you take a look at the oxygen, right, oxygen has one lone pair and three shared pairs. So oxygen's in group six, that's six valence electrons, and then the total formal electron count is, can you guess it? I hope you can. It's five, two from the one lone pair and three from each of the three shared pairs, which is five formal electrons. 
dog is barking right now, so I'm going to pick this video up in just a moment. Thanks. Sorry about that, just received a package. Uh, so where were we? Oh yeah, we were calculating the formal charge for the oxygen in hydronium ion. Well, the oxygen, again, it's going to be the uh, lone pair of electrons, which accounts for two formal electrons, and then each of the shared pairs is three for a total of five formal electrons, and that's going to be subtracted from six valence electrons that oxygen has to give a formal charge of plus one. So each of the hydrogens is zero, the oxygen is plus one. And this is a, um, this actually segues well into a very important point about formal charge, which is that, well, there's, there's really two important points about formal charge. The first is that for any molecule or polyatomic ion, the sum of the formal charges of all of the atoms <clears throat> must be zero in the case of molecules and in the case of polyatomic ions, it's going to be the charge of that polyatomic ion. So again, if we look at the formula for H3O+, that's hydronium ion, the charge of the whole ion is plus one, and we just confirmed that the sum of the formal charges is also plus one. So that actually checks out for us. So again, the sum of the formal charges is always going to be the charge of the molecular ion. If it's a molecule, it's always going to be zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, it's going to be the charge of that polyatomic ion. The other important point regarding Lewis dot structures <clears throat> is that, in general, if there are multiple Lewis structures possible for a given chemical formula, typically you're going to go with the one or ones that have the fewest number of non-zero formal charges. Let me repeat that. If you have two molecules that have the same chemical formula, it's just the structure or arrangement of those atoms is different. We call those isomers. Let's say you have two isomers, right? If one of those isomers has a lower amount of non-zero formal charges, then that is considered the best and most stable Lewis dot structure. It doesn't mean that the other one doesn't exist in nature. It very well might, um, but it's not nearly as stable as the one that's going to have the fewest number of non-zero charges. So <clears throat> to demonstrate what I mean, take a look at these two Lewis dot structures carefully and pause the video if you have to. Uh, which one do you think is the best Lewis dot structure based on the rules that we just followed? Well, if you look at the one on the left, the one on the left has non-zero formal, or it has zero formal charges all around. But if you look at the one on the right, the one on the right, and I'm, I'm calculating these quickly just for, for expediency, the one on the right does not have non-zero, it doesn't have non, or excuse me, it doesn't have zero formal charges all the way around. It's got at least one non-zero formal charge. And so the structure on the left would be the preferred Lewis dot structure, and it's more stable and more likely to exist in nature. All right, so that's the concept of formal charge. I look forward to reading your feedback below, and thank you very much for watching. All right, take care.